construction attachment incorporated. We're going to be installing our direct fit one touch kit today. Again, first thing is the tractor part. Um, we want to go ahead and set the parking brake and go ahead and relieve the pressure off the load. First thing we're going to do is the hydraulics installation. So with the tractor parked just like this, we'll work the valve handle in both directions. Go ahead and let the loader down. We should have no extra pressure on the system. When you pull your kit out of the box, we pre-hook pre up everything on the kit so that if this is the first cow one-touch kit you put on, you can actually take the kit out and spread everything out on the floor to know what all you have. Bear in mind, we make connections through here and they're all hand tightened. They are not tightened because a lot of the hoses need to be turned and twisted. Some of the connections may have to be taken off to put some kits on. There's a note in your instructions in every kit that will tell you this, but just a reminder, you need to tighten every hydraulic connection or there's a very good possibility you'll have leaks. Uh, we, we do not tighten those fittings because you may need to take them on. Your kit will also have a bag with a set of instructions for your particular tractor, um, step by step. Uh, the rest of your hardware will be included there, uh, including the um, control handle and any bolts and nuts that it might take to mount the, th mount the kit together. Several models of Kubota tractor use this same type of valve mount, the same, same valve actually. Um, we have uh, several different models of our valve mounts that, that will work off these same two bolts, but the valve has three holes, or three bolts already holding it in, so we're perfectly fine to go ahead and remove these two bolts all at one time. I'll leave the back bolt in place and remove the front one. Again, it's key that you get the hoses roughly where you want them as you're putting it in. They're a lot easier to position that way. We want to make sure that we have the two jumper lines facing towards the front of the tractor and that we've taken the pressure line and routed it where we can get to it in front of where our valve's being installed. Our valves you can see right here and we'll do the electrical installation in a little while but most of our valves come with an external ground we try to bolt that to our valve bracket because you're bolting the valve bracket to the chassis. Uh, you can internally ground these valves, but ground is critical to making it work, so we go ahead and tie the chassis ground to the coil ground inside the valve before you get it, and we tie it to the tractor on the outside. Now your kit hardware includes a couple of bolts for installing this valve plate. Got the first one installed. Go ahead and remove the Kubota bolt from the other side of the valve mount. And repeat the same thing. Okay, valve mount's in place. Uh, Kubota tractors, and this is very important. Before we hook into the hydraulic system, we need to go over this. Um, the tape typically indicates on a Kubota tractor, and this is defined in your instructions whether the tape is there or not. But on your Kubota tractors, typically anything with a gray piece of tape is a tank line. An orange piece of tape indicates pressure, and green indicates power beyond. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that we're in series with the power beyond on the output side of the valve. On this Kubota tractor, we have a gear pump. It's open center. It builds pressure until something relieves it or until something breaks. So if you install this valve, on the pressure side of the loader valve, you'll blow the pump up immediately when you start the tractor. Um, it's an expensive problem that's easily avoided. We're going to go ahead now, and I'm going to pull the power beyond loose from this side. We've already taken pressure off of our loader by operating the handle with the tractor off to relieve everything and lowering the loader to the ground. But by taking the, the downstream side of the power beyond line off, I should be able to drain what oil is in this line and have the least mess involved in the installation. We want to be sure to leave the adapter in the power distribution block, pull only the line fitting out. We'll leave that here draining into our bucket. Um, we've got our tank line set up going from T on the uh, DO3 valve. We've got the same 90 degree fitting here that was on the Kubota. We're just going to go ahead and let the excess of that line go to the front of the tractor. 
and work it in here and get it installed in the same place on the power distribution block. I'm going to try to be certain that you can begin threading up any of these JIC fittings by hand. They should start relatively easily. If you have it started in a way that you have to use a wrench to thread in the beginning, then you may cross-thread it and cause a leak down the road. You won't get a good seat. While we're fitting. looking up right here, it's mentioned in your instructions. We should mention it now. This same connection that we just made, if you're installing this on a tractor with a factory backhoe, then the green power beyond line that we just removed will actually run all the way to the pressure port of the backhoe valve and the backhoe will feed back into here. In that case, we can't use our line right here. We want to pull the power beyond line that we just removed from the loader valve and put it into T on our valve. That still puts our valve in series. It still puts it in series in the same place. We come from the loader valve to the one touch valve and then onto the backhoe. That's only in cases where you have a factory installed backhoe on any Kubota with a power distribution block. You'll have a power beyond line running from your loader valve all the way to the pressure point of the backhoe. We have our power beyond line installed here. We want to go ahead and tighten that connection while we have it here keeping the hose in the most advantageous angle that we can. Once we've made that connection, there's no reason to leave this connection loose any longer. We need to come in and secure the hose on our valve. Roll it to the back, tighten your hose connection, and we leave that loose only because that keeps the hose from putting twist into it that make it difficult to feed where we want it. You get these connections tightened at the point I'm tightening now. Oftentimes, the hose is bound up and they don't swivel as easily, and you'll put a kink in the hose that's difficult to work out. With that connection made, we can go ahead and push the hose back where we want it. With an 11 16 wrench, we'll tighten our 6801 fitting into the manifold. Okay, that finishes up the downstream side of our valve. We now want to go ahead and plumb pressure in the line that we removed on the lower side. We want to find the opposite end of that line on the loader valve. We want to go ahead and completely remove that line. It will not be reused in this installation. Some cases such as this one, you can make a little better access by going ahead and disconnecting the quick couplers. Laying those lines to the side. And you'll get a trickle of oil out of those, but nothing significant. Because of the order of operations that we used, that line was already empty when we removed it make this connection at the top a lot cleaner so that it's easier for us to go ahead and install our pressure line. The pressure line that we guided in when we began mounting this valve is now accessible. We want to route it back into the same fitting that we just removed the power beyond line from. By making this connection we now have power beyond from the loader valve into the P port on our DO3 manifold. We have pressure through that manifold on the T port going back into the power distribution block. So we have essentially put our valve in series, not parallel, we put it in series with the loader valve on the track. See nothing else we need here, so we can go ahead and reconnect our quick couplers. If we've taken those off, you don't have to take those off. Makes a little easier access. So, the only thing left to do is to go ahead and tighten the fittings on the pressure side of the one-touch kit mount we put in.